Tribes across the Gulf today are often described as being competitors to the nation, that there's a fundamental tension between the tribe and the modern nation state. So for instance, in Kuwait, the Bedouin or the Bedou are often accused of uh, being more loyal to the tribe than to the nation. And for instance, things like using tribal networks for social favors or in politics and elections are considered to be uh, dangerous or destabilizing for the modern state. Um, tribes are also often accused of um, you know, asserting a stronger tribal identity rather than embracing a more unified national identity, and that's seen as being uh, you know, hindering to social cohesion and national unity and so on. But these kinds of critiques and criticisms against tribes and tribalism in Kuwait uh, today are often very uncritical and are based on very thin assumptions of this idea of a, you know, tribal values or a tribal culture that is at odds or opposed to the modern state and should be dismantled. But that discourse doesn't take into consideration the very concrete historical factors as to why tribal affiliations remain so strong. So for instance, although most tribes over the several, last several decades have received citizenship, historically tribes have never received full access or equal access to state benefits like housing and education. Traditionally, they've received lesser um, benefits than, than other groups. And so often then tribes have had to fall back on their associations, their tribal networks for moral and material support, which helps explain the resurgence and, and strength of tribal networks today. And this is also hindered by the nationality law of 1959, which favored the Hadar or the former townspeople, the urban in Kuwait. The, the law stated that uh, you know, true Kuwaitis or original Kuwaitis, bit tetsis, are those who had been settled in Kuwait by 1920, in Mutuatanun fil Kuwait. Tribes, by definition, were not settled. So like other m minority groups, like Christians, for instance, the Bedouin were therefore not incorporated into the definition, the idea of what it means to be Kuwaiti. And so whenever you try and create this idea of a singular monolithic national identity, often you know, people are forced to subordinate their other loyalties to tribe, religious sect, their other identities, let's say, to that of the nation. Um, but in a, mono, in a multicultural society like Kuwait, that's problematic because when you are forced to subsume or, or sacrifice your own individual heritage and identity to subscribe to this dominant culture, but then are not fully integrated into that dominant culture legally or socially, you're not fully accepted as being part of that dominant culture, then inevitably it's, it's not surprising that groups might start to therefore reassert their own cultural heritage that they were forced to subordinate to begin with. So in a place like the Gulf, when we talk about national identity, the Gulf has never been mono-ethnic or mono-religion. And so rather than looking at tribal identity as being opposed to national identity, we should actually be looking at the resurgence of tribal identity to understand the dangers or the shortcomings of trying to impose a singular monolithic dominant national identity in what is in reality a very multi-ethnic, multicultural society.